What's up guys welcome back to another episode of smoking jazz barbecue if you are brand new to this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and make sure you hit that bell so that way you don't miss out on any brand new videos that i put out so we're going to continue our journey on our thanksgiving barbecue cooking series and we're going to be cooking brisket it's going to be good and delicious so let's get the preparation out the way all right guys, so I got an 11 pounder pack of brisket that I have right here, and I'm gonna trim off some of that excess fat, some of that brown skin, and some of that silver skin. However, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time telling you how to trim this brisket up. There's plenty of videos that you can search and find that teaches you how to trim off a brisket properly and correctly. But I'm gonna give you examples of what I'm trimming off, especially some of that silver skin that's on there. And definitely we wanna leave that good fat, which is that soft fat, that's gonna protect the meat and give us flavor. But such as that fat right there, that chunk of fat, which is called the Delco, you don't want to have that on your brisket. You want to get that off and cut it off and don't even bother with it because <laughs> it's not going to be goodies, guys. You don't want that in your system. Trust me when I tell you. All right. And some guys like to take that fat and mix it with the ground beef, but I'm not doing that. But you can do whatever you like, guys. And I just prefer not to do it. The corner rule is that you want to leave a quarter inch of fat on top of the brisket. This way it will protect the brisket from being burned and will definitely add some good flavor to it. If we flip it over, we're going to see that grain is running on that particular way and I'm going to cut it against the grain on that particular corner. This will allow me and notify me once I finish cooking where to cut it. Alright, just like so. And that's two pounds worth of fat that I don't want. All right. So I'm going to use some beef consomme right here to inject this brisket and it's going to add another layer of flavor. But you don't have to use beef consomme at all. You can use whatever you like. As a matter of fact guys, comment down below let me know what you inject your brisket with. I'm curious to know. So I'm going to finish injecting this in a checker like style pattern. This is going to create a lot of flavor pockets throughout the entire brisket. And I'm going to use a little bit of that beef consomme to act as a binder for my rubs. And today in flavor profile I'm using Montreal steak seasoning and honey hickory. This is going to be some awesome stuff guys. But you can use your favorite barbecue rubs. And both of these rubs should be widely available at your local supermarket. And it's made by McCormick, which is an excellent company. I highly recommend them, guys. So I'm going to finish seasoning this up on all sides. And I'm using a two-layer profile right here, which is that Honey Hickory and that Montreal Steak Seasoning. And what both of these uh, seasonings are going to do is act as one. And it's going to give me that layer and that flavor profile that I'm looking for. But guys, comment down below. Let me know what you use on your brisket. And guys, as always, always pet the rubs down and never rub your rubs in. So time for another pro barbecue tip. Never ever leave your meats uncovered, which means that you should season all meats on all sides. So your meat should not ever ever be butt naked. <laughs> if you catch what I'm saying. So you don't want to have a piece of brisket that has not been seasoned well and bite through it and you are missing that flavor profile. That's not gonna be good eats whatsoever, guys. So we're gonna flip and repeat the process on the other side. And again, I'm using a little bit of the beef consomme to act as a binder. And I'm using my flavor agents to season this all the way through. And pet the rubs down and never rub your rubs in. And as I stated earlier, guys, we don't wanna have any butt naked pieces of meat without any season on them whatsoever. So today's wood flavor profile, we're gonna be using that classic blend, which is that pecan, hickory, and mesquite. All these three flavors combined together, it's gonna to elevate your taste buds to another level. I promise you that, guys. Man, oh man, it's gonna give us that smoky flavor without overpowering the brisket. So you wanna fill your hopper all the way up to at least 90%, and then make sure you spread it evenly, guys. So we're gonna turn our power on and turn our smoker to the smoke setting. And guys, keep in mind, you can use any grills that you like. You don't have to use a pellet grill. And in this case, I'm using my Pit Boss Austin Excel, which is one of the best pellet grills out there, in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna open the lid and open the smoke stack if you had one. Once you see smoke, close the lid and then let it come up to temp. Once it comes up to that smoky temperature that you're looking for, we're gonna crank it up to 250 degrees. We're gonna be using canola oil for two simple reasons. One, to lubricate our grill, and two, so our meat, or in this particular case, our brisket won't stick to the grates. Time for some smoke flavor. Now take the brisket and place it in the middle of the pit. 
spread it out nice and even so ensure even cooking all the way around. Now today we're going to be using a meat thermometer made by Tenergy. You don't have to use this particular meat thermometer, you can use any one that you like. But take your probe and place it in the middle between the flat and the point. This will allow us to get accurate readings on your brisket. Now some people might put it on the point or on the flat, either or, but I like to place it in the middle. Be sure to connect your probe to your thermometer. And a good rule of thumb is to allow your brisket to come up to room temperature for about an hour before you place it on the pig. And as you can see, I'm at 54 degrees. We're gonna smoke this brisket for four hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit while we check on it each and every single hour. So after the first hour, let's see what she looks like. Wow, she's looking pretty, guys. She's getting that brownness that we're looking for, but not quite there where we're looking for that brown mahogany color. So we're gonna spritz it for two simple reasons. One, it's gonna help us retain that moisture that we're looking for so it doesn't dry out. And two, it's gonna add that color. In case you're wondering what's in that spritz bottle, I got a 50-50 blend of beef consomme and beef broth. So after another hour, as you can see the temperature are looking pretty good and it's rising. Yeah, and we're maintaining that 250 degrees on the pit boss also in Excel. Wow, not bad at all. As you can see, she got a little darker and this is what we're looking for. This is why I spritz it, just to have that particular color and also to retain the emotions as I stated earlier. Well, wow, she is looking pretty, guys. All right, so we're gonna close the lid and let it cook for another hour and let's see what she looks like after that. All right, so we have reached a critical internal temperature of 160 degrees. At this particular point, we call this the stall at this particular temperature. But to some barbecues, they might take it off the grill now and do a couple of things. One is to wrap it with aluminum foil or two, use butcher paper and place it back on the grill and let it finish that way. But you do have others that don't even take it off the grill and just let it cook until they reach an internal temperature of 205. But for me, I'm going to take it off between 165 and 170 and wrap it with aluminum foil. And I'm going to show you how that's done. So let's get to that te particular temperature that I'm looking for. So after another hour, we're at 169. Yep, it's time to pull this baby off. So we're still maintaining that 250 degrees temperatures that we had set for. And as you can see, we are in nighttime at this particular moment. But after four hours of smoking, let's see what she looks like now. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah guys, she is looking pretty. She's definitely done. Look at that brown mahogany color that we uh, achieved. So let's take the probe off and use some heat resistant gloves to take the brisket off. Be careful not to take off any of that bark. That's why I'm using gloves instead of spatulas or a tongue. Look at that, she is pretty. Oh man. So we're gonna do a makeshift boat. This will ensure that our liquors won't flow all over the place. So we're going to re-season this with some seasonings such as that honey hickory and that Montreal steak seasoning. But guys, you don't have to use this step whatsoever. You can just add your liquids and call it a day. But I'm going to finish seasoning this up because I want to add another layer of flavor. With the remaining of that beef consomme, I'm going to pour this all around the brisket. And to give you another barbecue tip guys, you never ever ever want to pour any liquids on top of that bark. You will ruin that bark. So be sure just to pour it on the sides. So we're going to wrap this up with a heavy duty aluminum foil just to make sure we're going to steam this nice and evenly. This is also called the Texas clutch guys. If you ever heard of that term, this is what it means. So I'm going to add another layer of heavy duty aluminum foil because I don't want any spillage whatsoever. But just to be on the safe side guys, I'm going to place it on top of an aluminum foil pan. This will catch any drippings that might spill out. Because we don't want any drippings to spill onto that pit. This is going to create fires on your pit and you don't want that. So take your meat probe and place it back in the middle of the brisket fat side up. Be sure not to punch it all the way through. So we're going to cook this for about 2 hours at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or until we reach the internal temperature of 205. Be sure to crank up your pit or your smokers to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see right there, we have reached the internal temperature of 208. Time to pull this brisket off. But I'm about to tell you which is the hardest part of the entire process of cooking this brisket. And I dread this part all the time, but we have to do it. <laughs> so we gotta allow this to rest for about one to two hours so all the juices can flow back to the meat. So let's pull this brisket off the aluminum foil. Wow. Look at that guys, she's looking pretty. Whew. 
man, oh man, look at that, guys. Juicy, tender, and moist. And look at that bark. Yeah, this is going to be some goodies, guys. All right, so let's split this between the point and the flat. Now, this should cut just like butter. And it does. Look at that. Nice and easy. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if you guys can see that, but some of those juices are flowing. Oh, this is going to be definitely some goodies. And we made that mark earlier, guys, when we first started trimming this up, and it's going to let us know where to cut it. So we always want to cut against the grain. But let me show you a little something right here. You see them juices, guys? Oh, wow. Wow. Let me cut another piece just so we can get another close-up. Hold on, guys. Let me cut another piece. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. You see them juices, guys? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to cut this to the width of the number two pencil, and we're going to do the full test. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Hold up. You don't believe me? You don't believe it's tender? You don't believe it's done? Hold on. Let me do another slice. Take a look at that, guys. Oh, yeah. Do you believe me now? And look at that smoke ring, guys. Wow. <laughs> this is my take on smoked beef brisket. This is my version of it. And we're not done yet, guys. We're not done. So we're going to make some burn ends, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you want to do first is cut into one inch slices and then we're going to cube them up to one inch cubes. But guys, comment down below. Let me know. Do you do burn ends on your brisket points or did you just cut into slices and serve them the way it is? So let me know down below in the comment section. All right. So but look at that, guys. Wow. Look at the juices flowing on that brisket point. Wow. <laughs> and look at that. It's cutting just like butter. Wow. I can't wait to eat this, guys. This is going to be some simple, good eats. Oh, man. So this is what I'm serving on my dinner table for my family to eat on Thanksgiving. But you can use this recipe and cook your brisket year-round, guys. And look at them juices flowing down to the last bite. Wow. <laughs> and again, it's cutting like butter. So I'm using my all-purpose rub here to season my burn-ins, but you can use your favorite barbecue rubs. And I'm also using a commercial base craft sweet honey barbecue sauce. And this is going to be the candy-like consistency that I'm looking for for my burn-ins. So apply a light coating on that barbecue rub, and also apply another light coating on that barbecue sauce. At this point, you want to add your brown sugar and make it as sweet as you like on your burn-ins. Mix all the flavors together so it can combine. And then we're going to take this back to the pit and cook it for 15 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is my take, guys, on a Thanksgiving meal that I serve each and every single year for my family. Man, smoked beef brisket, guys, and burnt ends. Guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. Stay tuned for its episode 4. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on anything. Until we meet again, guys, this is Smoking Jazz Barbecue.